So here's part of the other Richard Barlow epiphany I had. And uh, actually, just, just before Christmas, um, I did this myself with uh, an individual. We hooked him up real time just as, a, as a, an experiment. And we had a very similar reaction to this, which is pretty phenomenal. What you're looking at is brainwave activity. And we're looking at three different brainwaves here. We're looking at one is beta, which is the top one, which you can see my cursor is right here, the red and the pink up top if you look far to the left. Just below that, you have an alpha wave which is green and yellow. Below that, in the purple and light purple color, you have your theta wave. Now, beta is your sympathetic activity, your defense mode. Alpha and theta are your parasympathetic activity. They are your rest, healing, grow, repair, light sleep brain waves. Okay? This is actually Dr. Richard Barwell getting adjusted in front of 500 chiropractors in Canada with EEG leads on his head. He gets adjusted. You can see the brain waves are, are coursing along as we go across the right of the screen, screen. And you can see the moment of impact where alpha and theta, the uh, yellow and green, hook up with the purple and light purple colors. And then what happens at that moment of impact, at the adjustment? Beta, the defense mode, drops. And alpha and theta, especially theta, which is the strongest healing waves, straight to the ceiling. So what did you just do with this adjustment? They get on our nerve. You just changed this person's brain wave to the point where it went immediately into a healing mode. You put that body into a state of ease, taking away the dis from the disease. Now, the longer these people are in this disease, it ends up becoming disease. You can no longer coordinate the rest of the body. This is how and why. I keep saying the same thing, I know, but this is how and why chiropractic works. So I'm just thankful uh, that we have this stuff so we can start to show people that it has nothing to do with bone on nerve, and it has nothing to do with just the structural component. We change the body's neurophysiology, and structural changes occur when we put that information in there. So we show this to people, too, and we talk about the states of the nervous system. There, so there are, are basically two sides of the nervous system, right? the parasympathetic and sympathetic. So when that bear jumps out of that woods, all of those things have to happen in sequence, like what I said earlier, heart goes up, respiration goes up, hands get cold, clammy, adrenaline courses, digestion stops, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then as you step out of that and you go back into a healing mode, hopefully, all of those things reverse. You can go back to digesting your dinner or lunch, whatever it is, and you can your reproduction starts again, et cetera. Fight or flight or feed and breathe. So though, although we have those two sides, sympathetic, parasympathetic, there's five states the nervous system could be in. The first one is just called balance. It's a balanced nervous system. That means that the person is healthy. They are everything in their body is doing what it's supposed to do when it's supposed to do it. That's what we want and strive for everybody. We want everybody's nervous system to be functioning that way. If you fall out of balance, you're going to go one of a couple ways originally. You're going to go into what we call the under aroused nervous system, or you're going to go into the over aroused nervous system. Now, they get this in your patient packet as well with a bunch of other stuff so that they can kind of understand what it is. And this is also part of our entrance form where they can actually circle or check off ex uh, any of these they experience. So in the under-aroused nervous system, what happens is their parasympathetic system dominates their world. Okay? This is what ADD is. ADD is they are parasympathetically driven. They have great difficulty getting into beta wave or into that sympathetic activity. So if you're stuck in that, you have ADD, you're easily distracted, disorganized, depression, poor concentration, all ADD symptoms, right? But you also have things like low pain thresholds because you can be very sensitive, right, because proprioception overrides pain. So if you don't really have that oversympathetic activity, your pain threshold is going to be very low, so you're going to be very sensitive. Um, you're going to be irritable, and constipation is an example of somebody who is stuck in that under-aroused nervous system. Now, what I'm going to talk about after this, basically with ADD individuals, you'll notice if you do a lot of reading, I have a whole email account that's dedicated to different medical journals. And some of the medical journals often talk about that children with ADD always have dysautonomia. Their autonomic system is in disarray and chaos. And that's because their system is under aroused. So they cannot, it's sending erroneous messages to the body to do things that are just improper, the wrong things at the wrong time, or not engaging, etc. So now we can help explain how this works. If we go to the far right of the screen, you'll see the other side of that is the over-aroused nervous system. 
metaphorically speaking, that's somebody who uh, their nervous system believes they're being chased by a bear 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So their sympathetic system kicks in, that fight or flight system kicks in, and they do not kick out of it. They stay. When they try to relax, they can't. What happens? They get cold hands, cold feet, they have tight muscles, they have eye anxiety. That's when we see heart palpitations, high cholesterol, they have to see a burned out immune system, high blood pressure, irritable bowel syndrome. Why? Because the, the digestive system is no longer digesting. It's letting food sit in there and rot because your body's in fight or flight. It's in defense. And the thing I always talk about with the nervous system, with my patients, is your, your nervous system doesn't distinguish the difference between if you're being chased by a bear and you have a knockdown, drag out fight with your significant other, or you, know, you have a deadline and pressures at work, or you win the lottery. It doesn't even distinguish between good, good stressors or bad stressors. It only knows if it goes into an extreme, it reacts. So whether you're being chased by a bear or you just won $283 million dollars, you're still going to have all of the same reactions you have if you're being chased by a bear. Same thing. Somebody says, oh, you know, impromptu. Hey, uh, John Doe, listen, uh, I don't know if anybody told you, but you need to get up and do a uh, talk to 500 people at work and explain this uh, computer system. And that guy says, what? I'm not prepared for this. What happens? His heart starts beating fast. His hands get cold. His hands get clammy. Now, that is not a life-threatening situation, yet his body is acting as if it is. So... If it's written a program to stay in that and not ever, now that the talk is over, he's done. If his system doesn't have the ability to shut back down into a resting level, he's going to be stuck in an over-aroused system. And the next thing you know, he's diagnosed with high cholesterol and on cholesterol medication and blood pressure medication. When that's not dealing with his issue, his issue is his nervous system is out of balance. So that's how we correlate the stress response to how people live their lives. In the middle of this system, you see an unstable nervous system. In an unstable nervous system, is where you see these, that means the nervous system is fluctuating between over-aroused and under-aroused. So in the case of an unstable nervous system, that's where we see things like migraine headaches, or just headaches. They may not be migraines, but they come frequently. Seizures, hot flashes, PMS, okay, hot flashes. The body can't even regulate its temperature. It goes really hot, it drops off. It goes really hot, it drops off. Okay, a really severe example of somebody who is stuck in an, in an unstable system is somebody who's bipolar. You know, everything is a degree of severity in all of this, in every condition we may or may not have. Everything's degrees of severity. So in a bipolar condition, they're at the highest of highs, they're at the lowest of lows. Okay? So their nervous system just is in constant flux. Eventually, these people who are stuck in the unstable or the over-aroused nervous system eventually burn out, and the nervous system just waves the white flag and says, you know what? I'm wasted. I'm exhausted. So what happens? It goes into what we call the exhausted nervous system. In the exhausted nervous system is when we see things like cancer, autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia, okay, severe depression, chronic fatigue syndrome. And you can, you can all see them. I'm just reading them off. But to help you understand is how I convey this to people is, you know, even if we talk about cancer, in its most simplistic definition, what is cancer? Well, cancer is an abnormal cell. It's that simple. If you have a lung, if you have a cell in your lung that's not like a lung cell, it can't do what a lung cell does. So therefore, if that cell isn't recognized and destroyed, it'll proliferate into many cells. And if they say, research says that on average we produce 10,000 abnormal cells every day, why aren't we all graduate with cancer? Because not everybody's stuck in an exhausted nervous system, but those who are start to develop cancer. And it takes, on average, they say, seven to nine years for cancer cells to be detectable. And they say it takes, on average, 13 to 15 years for you to be symptomatic of that very same condition. And our current methodology of treating cancer is we're going to basically burn it out, cut it out, or poison it. But why does it keep coming back? Well, ultimately, it keeps coming back because, fundamentally, you still have the same problem. Your body doesn't have the ability or the energy to distinguish between a normal healthy cell and an abnormal tissue. That's the process of healing. Healing is just replacing damaged tissue with healthy tissue.